So let's start off with QR by the Graham Schmidt process. Now, I have done a whole separate discussion on the Graham Schmidt process, uh, much more in depth. I'll encourage you to reference that if you need a refresher or you need a little bit more information than what I'm going to provide here because I'm not going to go too in depth with this particular method. But basically, the Gram Schmidt process takes some square A matrix and produces an orthonormal matrix for us. The way that I introduced it before is it would take some set of vectors and produce an orthonormal set of vectors. But when we group them all into a matrix, it's really easy, uh, you know, just to see how that all works together. But in reality, when we're working with matrices, we're really just working with uh, sets of vectors. You can think of them as sets of vectors, and that's what the Gram Schmidt process does. Again, it takes some uh, random A matrix and produces an orthonormal matrix, provided it is square. So then all we really need to do to compute a QR matrix decomposition by the Gram Schmidt process is just find a way of getting our R matrix. And we can do that really simply here with this pretty simple formula right here where we're going to compute a whole bunch of inner products between our Q matrix once we obtain it and our A matrix. We can slide them into the respective positions of our upper triangular matrix right here and that is how we compute a QR matrix decomposition with Gram-Schmidt. But let's re review the Gram-Schmidt process very quickly. Remember again we're dealing with sets of vectors. So you can think of this set of X vectors as our A matrix, the set of Y vectors as our Q matrix with the first column of that A matrix. We're really just normalizing it and setting that equal to the first column of our Q matrix. Then uh, for the second column we're subtracting off one projection and normalizing. For the third column we're subtracting off two projections and normalizing and this is the way we're obtaining our Q matrix. And I want you to recall here that we're using projections here. We are taking our original set of vectors and we're using these projections to produce a new set of vectors that is our Q matrix. And so here's the code that we can use to perform a QR matrix decomposition via the Gram-Schmidt process. You can see this first function that I have right here called Gram-Schmidt. And what we're doing with it is we're just computing the Gram-Schmidt process, meaning that we're doing those projections, we're doing those normalizations, and as you can see, we are returning that Q matrix we get right at the end. So in the second function here, QRGS, that stands for QR by Gram-Schmidt, we're accepting some A matrix right here, that randomly generated A matrix that I showed you from before. We're getting The first thing we're doing is we're getting the shape of that A matrix, which should be square. We're generating our Q matrix with our Gram-Schmidt function second, and then we are generating a matrix of all zeros. And in these two loops right here, we are computing all the necessary inner products and sliding them into the respective positions from this particular formula right here that I showed you before. More particularly inside this first loop we are taking care of the inner products along the diagonal of our R matrix and then the second loop is taking care of everything above the diagonal. All right, this is the result that we end up getting. You can see I am computing a runtime, and we're going to compare the runtimes using each one of these methods right here. But you can see that our R matrix is clearly upper triangular, and uh, we're not going to compute Q transpose by Q or Q by Q transpose, but we can compare it to the results from before using the NumPy lin alg qr function. And you can see, comparing each one of these results, that our R matrix is almost identical, except we are differing by a few different minus signs, and that's perfectly okay. So long as the absolute value of each one of these numbers is there, that's what we want. And you can see the same thing for our Q matrix. I'll encourage you to pause it and spot check this if you want to. And again, if you want to audit all the code to make sure that this is actually working and compute A minus QR, uh, you could go ahead and do that, and you'll find that uh, you end up getting the zero matrix back out, so everything's working out all right.